All right, amen. I am three minutes late. I apologize, uh, technical difficulties, but uh, I am here uh, to conduct a cyber Bible study. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to give people an opportunity to uh, join in. And if you're just joining in, be sure to share. Sister Janice Williams, blessings to you. Thank you for joining Star Pack. Thank you for joining. You all be sure to share. Thank you for joining. I'm going to uh, allow for a few more people to join in. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. People are still coming in. If you're just coming in, be sure to share. Amen. People are still joining in. Blessed Speedy. God bless you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. People are still joining in. Sister Janice, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. People are still joining in. People are still coming in. Amen. Amen. Prayerfully, everyone is uh, doing good today on this uh, beautiful day that the Lord has made. And uh, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. People are still joining. Blondell Phillips, thank you for joining. If you're just joining, be sure to share. Uh, people are kind of slow uh, coming in on today, uh, trying to give people an opportunity to join in. Let me send out some invites real quick. Sending out some invitations. I wish it would give me more, more options. All right, okay, we, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, Blundell Phillips, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. So I'm gonna go to uh, Prophetess Taylor, blessings to you, thank you for joining. I'm gonna go to uh, Matthew, Let's go to Matthew, the uh, sixth chapter. That's the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to look at verse 8. We're going to start with verse 8, Matthew the sixth chapter verse eight matthew the sixth chapter verse eight if you're just joining in uh be sure to like and share <clears throat> y'all excuse me if I, if I have to uh clear my throat a couple of times um i'm at the end of a cold so uh i never declared that i'm sick i always say i'm healing so I'm I'm healing, but I'm I'm coming down toward the end of it. So praise God for that. Okay, so we're at Matthew the sixth chapter, verse eight. So let's jump in. Be not ye therefore like unto them. I'm gonna jump back to verse five so we can see who the them is. Verse 5 says, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, 
are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. All right. I wanted to let you see that first. So now let's jump back down to first eight. So we are known not to be like them. So be not ye therefore like unto them. Okay. So uh, let's look at verse seven. I really want to make my point in verse uh, in verse eight, but let's go to uh, verse seven. It says, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So we have hypocrites and heathens. Okay, and it's talking about religious people. So using a lot of words is not going to make God hear us. Using a lot of repetitious words won't make God hear us. So let's look at verse eight. It says, because they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You know, when um, when talking about uh, prayer, you'll be amazed that when we really understand how to pray, and I'm not talking about starting out because there's a way to start out, but then there's a way where we, you know, we begin to mature, we begin to grow. Uh, one of the best examples I can give, because another word for prayer is to ask, okay? Another word for prayer is to ask. And uh, I thank God for everybody that's joining in um, for these cyber Bible studies because uh, I'm, I think that I'm going to only make them available to those who watch it live. The uh, cyber Bible studies, I'm going to make them available to those who watch them live. But um, it was a point that I was getting ready to make. Uh, when we really begin to understand prayer, you'll be amazed at um, at God's perspective of prayer. So here it says, "Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth." Listen to this: what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. Now, what you need to understand is another word for ask is pray. Pray, ask. That's why uh, verse 8 says, uh, says um, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him after this manner, therefore pray. You see that? So it, it could it could have read, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you pray him. Okay? After this manner, therefore ask ye. It could be it could be read uh, in that matter as well. So with this being said, when we examine verse eight, when it says to be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. This is letting us know that God has a way that he wants to be approached. Wow. There is, even in the New Testament, there is a way to approach God. Becky Carter Evans, thank you for joining. Alexis Allen, thank you for joining. There is a way to approach God. And the Bible tells us that the fear of God, and it's talking about reverence, respect. You know, uh, the point that I was getting ready to make is, as we develop in our language and, and um, we begin to mature and we begin to learn how to ask, we ask according to our maturity level and our ability to communicate. And, and one of the best examples I can give, because the Bible says to make your supplication, make your prayers and your supplication known unto God. Another word for supplication is beg. So it says that you can beg. Now, when I think about certain levels of communication and maturing and our ability to communicate or ask, a baby doesn't know how to speak yet, but they, they know, but they learn how to communicate through patterns, through consistency. And so a baby has more of a tendency to beg, you know, and that's because they're still developing in their ability to, uh, to ask for things. And so a baby may cry. Then the baby gets to a point where the baby doesn't have to cry anymore. The baby can, can say, um, e -e. some of you all are familiar with that. 
as our nieces and nephews or your children get older, they start saying ee. I know some of my nephews would say ee. My niece, Kaylin, when she's thirsty, she goes, <laughs> so, you know, or when she wants to eat, she'll smack her lips because that's the way my sister did her. When she was getting ready to feed her, she'll go. And so now when, when Katie, and she's one years old, she wants something to eat, she'll go. So she's communicating at the level of her maturity, her ability, you know, to communicate. And uh, then as we get older, we learn how to, you know, to hold our hand out. Can I have some? And then we get to the place where you get a little bit older and you want something for your mom that you keep pulling on and say, mom or dad, can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? And you do it repetitiously like a child, what the scripture is talking about. You all remember? You remember in the grocery store, we would try to wear our parents down to get a, uh, get a candy bar or a toy and we would keep asking them, repetitiously asking. And, and the Bible says in verse seven, it says, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitious repetitions. You see, and so there's a there's a point where as children, you know, we ask, but as we begin to mature and we we begin to learn how to communicate, then we govern we should govern ourselves accordingly. The apostle Paul said, When I was a child, I spake as a child, you know, and so um and I, I think as a child, I spake as a child, but when I became a man, I put away what childish things. We are supposed to come. We're supposed to mature in our ability to communicate with God. And with that being said, we we grow into understanding that there is a way that God wants us to approach him. And in verse eight, Jesus is telling us, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. In other words. There is a certain attitude that God is expecting for us to have when we come to him. Isn't that something? It's not just about, <clears throat> excuse me, asking. It's about our attitude. When we, 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 when we, as we mature in God, we, you get to a place of understanding that you don't have to come to God um, with low expectancy or like you're talking to him and he's so far away you know uh holy spirit is here and so there's there's an attitude you see what i'm saying there's an attitude that is supposed to go along with how we ask <clears throat> you know and we can learn a lot from our children the bible says such is the kingdom you know and these are these these little children these will be the little ones that's going to enter into uh, into heaven but uh, children have such confidence in their parents' ability. And the parents could be struggling financially. And when we were kids, we, we had no concept of, of money. And, um, you know, what our parents, you know, what was and was not capable of doing. In our eyes, they could, they could do anything. Anything that we thought that we wanted, our parents could do it, you know. And we would come to them with confidence. And we felt, you know, mom could be crying on the inside. You know, going through the grocery store and, and buying things and, and knowing she's on her last dime, you know, and we won't even know. We won't, we couldn't even conceptualize that. To I know for me, speaking personally, my mom was superwoman, you know, and I felt like there was nothing that uh, um, she wasn't able to do. And, and that's just the way it was. So to me, she was superwoman and she had it, you know, uh, she had the means and, and, and uh, we had a confidence when it came down to, to asking her. And matter of fact, Jesus is so concerned about us and our attitude uh, with our approach with God when asking him. Jesus gave us some revelation in verse nine. He said, after this manner, pray ye, our, therefore, man, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our father. He, he is so, he, he is so, what's the word I'm looking for? He wants us to understand stand our approach with God and our stance, stance with God to the point of understanding that when we pray to him or we ask him, we can ask him like a child is, is talking to a parent. And he didn't stop here. If, if you go to uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, we're going to go to uh, verse seven. Listen to what verse seven says, because Jesus is emphasizing, he is overly emphasizing 
the importance of how we um, approach God. Matter of fact, before I go to seven, I'm going to go back to six. We're going to jump. I want, you to, I want to show you something here. Look at verse 25. And, I, and, and people of God, I want you all to get this. I'm talking, Jesus is the one who's saying this. He's trying to get across to us attitude, your, your, your level of, of confidence when you come to God. And, and we're going to take it a step further. We're going to go, we're going to go deeper. But look at verse 25. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said, you all, I'm coming toward the end of, um, of my healing. Uh, Pastor Coley Cooper, that's my big brother. Uh, thank you for joining. Blessings to you. So here it says, verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye what, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Look at verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more better than they? Look at what Jesus is saying. Here. Jesus is saying, it's time for you all to, under, to, to, to take on the right attitude. There's a, there's a level of confidence that Jesus wanted us to have. And he's emphasized, he said, he said, take no thought for tomorrow. He said, if, if, if your father would take care of the lilies of the field and the fowls of the air, and, and your life is much more better than they. So, so what is your attitude toward God? And, and, you know, prophetically, you know, I know what the Lord is wanting me to say. There are some people under the sound of my voice that, that that's live listening to me right now and you've been concerned about your life you know you've been worrying you've been taking thought for tomorrow and god wants to get us to a place of confidence in him where we understand that the lord is our shepherd we shall not want The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. And so verse 26 says, Behold the, the, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feed them. Are ye not much more, uh, much better than they? Look at verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Taking thought for tomorrow and worrying will never put food on your table. Taking thought for tomorrow, worrying will never add a, a promotion on your job. It'll never fix relationships. Why do we waste so much time thinking? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? God is saying, confidence. Can I tell you all something? How many people, let me ask you, let me ask you all this. How many people feel that you can have a successful relationship with a person that doesn't trust you? <clears throat> How would you feel if you were in a relationship with someone and every time you told them that told them you're going to do something, you did it? You, or you haven't given them you haven't given them a reason not to trust you. How many people think that you could have a successful relationship with a person that doesn't trust you? For no reason. I could see if, you know, if, if there was a reason. It would be difficult. It would be difficult to have a relationship with a person. No matter how much you want to be able to have a relationship with them, R.A. Tory, blessings to you. Godliness without contentment is great gain. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's where I'm on my way to. And his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Thank you for that. So, people of God, the word confidence, when talking about being confident, having confidence in God, the word confidence, and, and within that word confidence, F-I-D, is the word for that fidelity. It's a banking term. That word fidelity deals with trust. You hear me, people of God, with trust. I think con also means with, with trust. I, I'm going to have to go back and refresh my my memory on the c-o-n the uh, the prefix but but in order to have confidence in god fidelity fidelity banking credit stocks bonds 
uh, uh, insurance, um, um, contractual agreement, legal uh, uh, binding uh, context. <clears throat> God is saying, I want you to have confidence. I want you to trust me. I want you to understand. Check this out. Watch this. And this is this is something that I've been I, I've been feasting on. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The scripture tells us that God has given us all things. Listen to this pertaining to life and godliness. And I, I think that where where we are getting off is a lack of contentment as was mentioned by uh, R.A. You, we, the Apostle Paul said, I learned to be content. <clears throat> My wife and I have recently gone through some um, financial things due to uh, trying to start a business. We stepped out on faith. You know, uh, everything didn't go the way that we planned. We, we, we had big plans. We was expecting certain things to happen. And there were certain things that happened. And now it has put us in a position where uh, we had two cars, uh, two nice cars. Now we're down to one car. <clears throat> and it's a downgrade from what we've been accustomed to while serving God, trusting God, ministering his word, had big plans. We stepped out on faith. Infidelity is unfaithfulness. I like that. Thank you. I was thinking about fidelity, confidence. And there's that in. And were, the word I-N also means not. So that word I-N also means not. So not fidelity, not trust, no trust. Does that make sense? So unfaithful, infidelity. And so people of God, I, I do believe that, I mean, just by looking at confidence and then infidelity, I do believe that when we don't trust God, he looks at it like we're cheating on him, you know, like infidelity. Because let me tell you something, whatever you fear, that's what you worship. If you fear the, the debt collectors, if you fear the bills, if you feel the doc, fear, fear the doctor's report, that's who you worship. We're supposed to fear God. <clears throat> and I was telling people before uh, uh, in Matthew 6, 33 at that time, I said, if you're going to be afraid, be afraid that a check is going to be in your mailbox. That's going to pay all your bills off. If you're afraid, be afraid that. That, that the healing you've been waiting on your body is about to overtake. I'm, I am afraid. I'm scared to death. I'm about to get a blessing. You know, if, if you just want to practice fear, you know, if you if you just have to worry, why don't, why don't you worry about, man, I'm just worried because, you know, all my debt finna get paid off and and, and I just want to make sure that that um, I'm, I'm low key. I don't want too many people to know uh, that God has has blessed me with overflow because, you know, people lose their mind and they make you out of, out of a God and they're you know, it destroys relationships when people know you have too much. Sometimes, you know, if, if, if you're just going to worry, you know, and somebody said downsize to for the upgrade. Amen. You know, uh, and there's a scripture I'm going to go to as well. <clears throat> but people of God, with all that being said. It's a lot of people will stay with God while things are well. Who wants a relationship with a person that, that don't trust you? Who wants a relationship with a person that, that can only be with you when you're saying yes? Yeah. So so I, I I have been experiencing some things and, and, and you you know, I've had my days. <clears throat> I've had my days, you know, where um I get to think it too much and I have to shut those thoughts off. Blessing to you, Apostle Jackson. Blessings to you. So I've had those days where I had to shut those negative because those negative thoughts will run through your mind. It'll come through your mind. And, and you have to bind those thoughts. What the Bible said, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The scripture wouldn't have to tell us that if you weren't having thoughts and imaginations. So there are some people right now under the sound of my voice and you've been having thoughts. You've been having imaginations. You've been seeing yourself, you, you know, put, up, put off the job. You've been seeing yourself fired because they've been laying, being laid off. You've been seeing yourself losing your house. You've been thinking too much. You, you're too much in your head. You're too much... Uh, taking a, a thought for tomorrow teach sir we are supposed to be able to do better than those of the world system amen so so first of all people of god get out of your head because your confidence doesn't need to be in your ability but your confidence needs to be in god's ability thank you jesus 
And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I, I, I am endeavoring, endeavoring to minister to someone to get you out of, out of yesterday and out of tomorrow. You need to get out of yesterday and you need to get out of tomorrow. Can I tell you why? Because the Bible says that God is a very present help. If you want help from God, you need to be in the present. You need to be in the present. And then you need to understand that God says that he's our shepherd we shall not want. And we don't have to come to him and asking him things like the heathens do as if he doesn't know what we have need of before we ask. So in other words, when we approach God, we need to approach God with confidence. If, if I'm confident that a person can do something, I'm going to them and saying, hey, thank you. I, I appreciate that. So God, I thank you for your help. You know, because I'm now I'm approaching God, understanding that I'm not lacking anything. It it looks like it. See, 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 let's go back to let's go to the principles of the word of God. You look like you're lacking. You look like you don't have more than enough and you may need to reassess your stewardship. Does that make sense? It may be time to downsize. It may be time to stop trying to look like you're blessed. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Because can I tell you all something? Blessed is a language. It's not an appearance. Many of us ended up getting, 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 uh, we bought the lie. And, and, and we, you know, we started striving to have things, you know, so that people can say, you know, God has blessed us and God is with us. And, and I can tell you, people of God, some people, you know, have been in situations where, um, Lady Stansberry, blessings to you. Sister Monique Banks, blessings to you. Caprice Kimmack, thank you for joining. If you all have not shared, make sure you share. Embrace your now. That's right. Thank you, Lady Stansberry. She said, embrace your now. So people of God, what I'm saying is, being blessed is not an appearance. Jesus was on the cross, bleeding profusely from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. <laughs> and he was, he was beyond blessed. Do you hear me, people of God? Being blessed is not an appearance. Being blessed is a language. I know, I know when I'm around a blessed person because a blessed person talks a certain way. And I've been around people that have a lot of things, but I knew they were not blessed because blessed is a language. I can prove it. Psalms 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. How is he going to bless the Lord? His praise shall continue to be where? In my feet, in my hands. He was blessing the Lord with his mouth. The praises of his mouth bless the Lord. Praise is a, is blessings is a praise language. The way you talk, I can prove it. Let me give you another example. That's Old Testament. Let me give you New Testament. Jesus told Peter that you are going to deny me three times. He said before the cock crows. So Peter went about his way following Jesus. The Bible says from afar off. And there are some people you've been following Jesus afar off, but it's time to come now. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to, it's time to step on out into the deep. So Jesus, um, our a Tory, I'm going to get to yours in just a second. You'll come in. I want to see what you have to say here. I'm going to get to it in just a second. But, but, Truly being blessed is a language. I can tell when I'm around people. It doesn't take me long when I'm around a person to tell if they're blessed or not. So um, so Peter was following Jesus afar off. Then uh, the scripture says uh, people saw him. The damsel saw him. I believe the man whose ear was cut off says something in different. These are different, um, uh, different of the Gospels. But uh, <clears throat> so they said. You're one of the followers of Jesus, and, and Peter denied Jesus. He denied it. No, I'm not. And, and, and they said, yes, you are. He's one of those followers, and he denied it again. And, and, and they say with assurity, you're one of Jesus' followers. You're one of his disciples. And so <clears throat> they said to Peter, we know you are because your speech giveth you away. That should make everybody stop, pump the brakes right now, and say, wait a minute. These folks knew that Peter was a follower of Jesus because of the way he taught. Are y'all getting it? They knew that Peter walked with Jesus <clears throat> because of his speech, the way he taught. So what did Peter do? He turned it up a notch. He cursed. 
he changed his speech. I'm telling you, people of God, I, I don't need but a few minutes with a person to know if they're blessed, to know if they can. I don't care how much possessions they have. The moment I get with a person and in and, and the first 15 minutes, they're talking about what, what President Trump is doing. They're talking about uh, what's going on in the government. And, and, and if, if the government don't get straightened, if we don't vote, this and that's going to happen. I know I'm, I'm messing with some stuff now. But it's so many people, they're so, they have bought into that the government is our hope. The government is our heaven. I already know, okay. Yeah, their kingdom is of this world. I, I may be messing with some stuff, but if I'm messing with it, it's, it's still something to consider and think about. You know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I'm not concerned about what's going on in politics and in the government. Because every situation that happens that seems like it's negative, <clears throat> the Bible has already said it. People are getting all bent out of shape about uh, uh, the LGBTQ community and, and, and uh, all of these crazy things that's going on in the media. And the Bible already told us that in the last days, the people are going to be without natural affection. The Bible is right. It's coming to pass. We should be celebrating. Come on, somebody, and educating. We should be celebrating, educate, we should be celebrating, educating, and preaching and teaching. Celebrating, educating, teaching, and preaching. Celebrating, educating, teaching, and preaching. Because our kingdom is not of this world. And, and we need to understand that, that, that according to the words of Jesus, the kingdom of God is within you. So regardless of all these things that's going on in this kingdom, there's a kingdom on the inside of me that you can't trump. There's a kingdom on the inside of me that you can't stop. There's a kingdom on the inside of me that you can't shut down its economy. Glory to God. And when we start having confidence in God again, which means, see, it's not, you know, sometimes people feel like, you know, what well, God really ain't working. He's, he's not moving the way he used to. You know why? Because many of, our, many of us, our confidence is, is in the doctor. It's in medication. It's in the government. It's, it's in our job. So we have all these idols in ignorance that we don't realize. And so we don't have the same amount of confidence and expectation in God because we already ha have uh, put crutches in all those different places. If you're not feeling good, you go, you go take some medication. You know, uh, uh, if you're not feeling good emotionally, mentally, you go see a psychiatrist. You know, if, if, you, if your money is funny, you know, we have different things that we can do. And so we've just practiced not having to rely on God. And, and, and many of us, thank you, R.A. Torrent, a lot of people that are professing Christians, but you're in, you're in infidelity. You, you are cheating on God. You, you've been taken by temptation, and God wants to create a way of escape so that, so that we can flee idolatry. You know, and so listen, people of God, I know I'm saying you, and I'm saying you in general, us, we, we, we need to get our expectation back in God and not on these things. And what, what will end up happening is when we begin to expect in God and trust God and have confidence in God and, and get our fidelity, our insurance back in him, then that kingdom that's with on the inside of us will cause that meal barrel to keep filling up. It'll cause that gas tank to keep filling up. Come on, somebody. It'll cause that, that manna from heaven, that bread from heaven to come down and feed us. Glory to God. So, yeah, so Peter's speech gave him away. <clears throat> so being blessed is, is not an appearance. Being blessed is a language. Come on, somebody. And so it requires humility. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Watch this. And the humble shall hear the oven be glad. It's so much going on in Psalms 34, 1, 2 and 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Blessing, blessing is a language. You bless God with a language. God blesses you with, with a language, with communication. That's why on the day of Pentecost, he gave us languages. During the Tower of Babel, he took it away, and they could not build together. Day of Pentecost, he gave us our language back so, we, so that we could build. I'm telling you, there's a blessing in communicating. Many of us right now, you're, you're not experiencing the communication of God in your surroundings, in your health, in your finances, because you don't understand what it really means to be blessed. And what really means to be blessed is communication. Within communication is community. Within communication, in community is a uh, commune, fellowship. Within communication, community, and commune to fellowship is union. 
We're lacking in oneness. We're lacking in community. We're lacking in communing with God. We're lacking in communication with God. We're communicating with everything else. We're speaking about everything else. People get sick, I'm sick. People, people low on money, I'm broke. So those are the things that you're communicating instead of what? Communicating the word of God. The word of God builds communities. The word of God builds communion. The word of God builds union. The word of God builds unity. The word of God builds. And when we speak the word of God, then we will see the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow. Do you hear me, people of God? There's, there's, there's so many, so many uh, biblical principles that we, that we are bypassing. You, you'd be surprised, and some are not, how negative Christians talk. Negative. There's some, you know, it, it's nothing, it's nothing worse for me. Some people may not mind, but it's nothing worse for me than to be around a Christian. And every time I'm with them, I feel like I need to pull out the violin. Yeah, I'm just really going through. I'm I'm sick in my body. I mean, just just death and life in the power of the tongue. So choose life. So and, and and just just so I can tell I can tell that that you're not blessed. Five cars, ten garages. I mean, just refrigerator full. And and people complain. And let me tell you something. You, you've got to understand <clears throat> that you're land, according to God, you're property, you're real estate. And one thing about one good thing about real estate is that that land has um, it has a tendency to appreciate, <clears throat> to increase in value. You know, sometimes you have to let it sit, but it will, you know, it will increase in value. And I've told people oftentimes that's associated with the uh, with my teaching ministry that when you when you complain, you depreciate. Remember, the children of Israel <clears throat> went into the wilderness and they went in circles for forty years because they complained. They were depreciating. They wore down. They wore out. They decreased in value. They just wore out. <clears throat> So God cut them off. He cut off the complainers and had a select few that was able to go into the promise. When you appreciate, you increase in value. God, I appreciate you. you. You may not feel like you have everything that you need, but the Bible says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. So if you need it, what you think you need right now, you'd have it because God supplies all our need. Does it make sense? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's time for us to take on the attitude that we're not lacking anything. You know, even, even if, I, if, if I feel a situation in my body, you know what I say? I say, Lord, I thank you right now that what you've already done, my body is, is receiving it. I'm not wanting. It's just that I'm, I'm just in, 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 in a process of manifestation. You know, and, and like I said before, um, uh, Hebrew, I was getting ready to go to Hebrew chapter 11, verse 3 says that by, by it or by faith, the worlds were framed, listen to this, by the word of God. I'm, I've been talking about being blessed is a language. The word of God, Peter's speech gave him away. The word of God, the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. I don't care what is appearing to you. You've got to understand. You've got to take on the confidence, the fidelity, the banking, the trust, You've got to understand that God has given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. The Lord is your shepherd. You should not want. What happens when we start taking on that mindset? What happens when we approach God and, and asking him or in prayer, understanding that he already knows what we have need of before we ask? What happens when we truly take on the mindset that we don't have to take thought for tomorrow and that we cannot add to it? We can't add a cubit to our stature worrying. When, when are we going to realize that, that God takes care of the lilies of the field and, and the fowls of the air, and we're much more important? We're much more better. So, so seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. When, when, are, when are we going to, as, as Christians, take, 
Take our minds on up and let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, and put our foot down and, 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 and understand that we choose life. When are we going to put our foot down and say, you know what? This is it. No more complaining. No more tail bearing. No more gossiping. No more complaining. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. If, if, if it appears that I'm lacking, I understand that I'm not because the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen and I've made the things which do appear. It looks this way, but it's not that way. It looks like I'm lacking, but I'm not lacking because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It looks like I'm, I'm in want of something. It looks like I'm in need of something, but, the, but God supply all my need according to his riches and glory. God has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness. And when we begin to, to set our minds and understand that blessings is, is not predicated upon what we possess, then we can start downsizing. Then we can stop wanting so much. Then we can get out of being consumers and become investors and builders. God is God has intended for us to be investors and builders. Jesus said to occupy till I come. If you don't believe me, look up the Greek word for occupy in that passage of scripture. When you look up the word occupy in that passage of scripture, it means to control banking and trading. God gave us back the ability to communicate on the day of Pentecost so that we could build. And if you don't believe me, uh, uh, Prophetess Taylor, if God did not give us the Holy Ghost, the fire that set on our tongue, they began to speak in different languages. They went out. There were devout men of different languages that heard them speaking, and they confessed that they were speaking their dialect. So God gave them back the ability to communicate, which they lost at the Tower of Babel. So he knocked down their structure. They were building, remember? Day of Pentecost, he gave us back language. They went out, different nationalities of men that spoke different languages recognized their language. So he gave us back the ability to speak. Why? Because, he, because in, in our language, in our ability to communicate, we're able to build again. God wants us to communicate so that we can build. Communicate what? His word. When we begin to communicate his word, guess what? Not, not um, justice, justice rallies. We don't need to go and walk the street and talk about no justice, no peace. That's not in the Bible. Can I tell you all something real quick? <clears throat> Did Jesus receive justice when Pilate decided to have him flogged and then eventually sent to the cross? Did he receive justice? Now, let me ask you this. Was it God's will for Jesus to receive justice? Now, let me ask you this. If Jesus had received justice that we in this day and time are so pushing for, that's one of the biggest things, justice, social justice, 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 justice. If Jesus had received justice, if, if some, some protesters had have come and, and rallied and protested and talked about injustice and, 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 and made petitions and sent out attorneys and, and different things like that to stop Pilate, and Jesus had received justice, what would have happened to us? It was not God's will for Jesus to receive justice that day. So what I'm saying, people of God, it's time for us to start speaking God's word. If we want to see our communities, if we want to see communion, if we want to see union, if we want to, if we want to see what it really means to be blessed and for our children to be blessed, then it is time for us to start communicating God's will. We need to communicate God's will because it's nothing more of a blessing than for our children to start speaking like God and speaking God's word. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? To truly be blessed is to communicate. It's to communicate with God and be in communication with God. God gave us the blessing of communication because communication is the blessing. Does it make sense? And so uh, uh, prophetess um, Taylor, do me a favor. Go to Jude. Chapter 1, King James Version, Jude chapter 1, verse 20, and post that for me. And I want, I want you all to see what happens when we communicate in the Holy Ghost. Because I told you all that the purpose of communication is to build. And to truly be blessed is how you communicate, how you talk. If you want a blessed marriage, how do you talk? How do you talk to each other? 
If you want to bless marriage, if you want, if you want bless relationships, it's going to come through communication. If, if you want to be blessed on your job, even if the person is doing you wrong, how are you communicating? A soft answer turns away wrath. I had a, let me give you all a quick testimony. There was a guy that was really uh, short with me. Um, he, uh, it was a tire place in South Haven, Mississippi. And I was going to get my tires fixed. And so since they had such good deals, I was constantly going there and he was really short and, you know, and I, I need, I really want, I was, I continued to be nice and I wanted us to be able to communicate and, and for things to flow smoothly instead of the tension when I would go and it, it was just unmerited. You know what I did? I continued to, to communicate with him and be respectful and be kind. I went about him. Um, I asked him what he, what does he like to eat? I went and bought him a, um, a uh, car to his, that, his restaurant. I can't remember if it was Red Lobster or something like that. Someone bought him a car. Our relationship completely changed. He, he remembered my name. When I would call, he knew who I was. We just had a, uh, we had the manifestation of the blessing because I, I was diligent with communicating with him. And the kingdom that was on the inside of me took over that situation. Do you hear me, people of God? Let me scroll down, then I'm gonna come back to uh, R.A. Tory because I want to see what he has to say. Let me come down and see if you were able to get it. Yet. Here we go. Y'all look at this. Jude chapter one, verse 20. But ye beloved, building up. Doesn't that, doesn't that sound like the Tower of Bible? Remember, the Bible said there would be one speech, one mind, one speech. And God said it would be nothing that they couldn't do if we don't come down and confound their language. You see? So look. But ye, building, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying, communicating in the Holy Ghost. If you want to see your communities built up, you need to communicate in the Holy Ghost. You want to see your marriage, your relationship, your jobs, your community building up, your finances, your health. You want to see it building up, then you need to communicate in the Holy Ghost. You need to communicate in the Holy Ghost. Stop saying you sick. If you have diabetes, stop saying my sugar, my, my diabetes. You have arthritis, stop saying my arthritis. Stop claiming it. Stop saying you sick. Stop saying you broke. If you don't feel like going to work, you call in sick. Stop flirting with sickness. Stop lying. You got some lying Christians. You're really tired. You don't feel like going to work, so you call in sick. You know what? I did it before I got saved, thank God. But I did that. I would call in sick. I go get a doctor's note and then have the rest of the day off to do whatever I want to do. I make sure I set my doctor's appointment early. And you have people now that are flirting with, you know, sickness. And you say it's so easy. Uh, you know, you use it as leverage. I, I just don't feel good. <clears throat> I don't feel good today. Stop it. Stop, the, stop communicating that. Stop communicating you're sick. Stop communicating you're broke. Stop, stop yelling at your children and tell them, y'all make me sick. Y'all going to kill me. Look, look at how people, look at how Christians... Your blessing is really in how you communicate. Some of our children are growing up and, and, and messed up, and we're trying to figure out what's wrong with them. You want to communicate with them right. I took them to church, and that's all you did. But at home, they heard you. They heard you complaining. They heard you arguing. They heard you yelling at them. They, they saw your frustration. They heard you say, y'all going to make me sick. Isn't that something? And so I, we try to figure out why our children are blessed, why they're so wayward. How are you communicating with them? How are you communicating with your spouse? How are you communicating on the job? <clears throat> is this some good teaching? Is this is this helping somebody? We need to we need to we we need to get to a place where our speech give us away. People should know we Christians by how we talk. People should know that we've been with God. Those people knew that that Peter had been with God. And you got Christians now they cursing. We ain't nowhere in the Bible to say we can't curse. Peter cursed and then they left him alone. So, so we can deduce from that safely that if you want to prove that you're not a follower of Christ, curse. That's what he did. <clears throat> Christians using profanity. Pastors using profanity. Isn't that something? So I think I'm going to wind down. There's so much. Ooh, you all. I got so much more to share. <clears throat> we have 49 minutes now. And like I said, again, the more I talk, it's stirring up my, you know. And so uh, I'm healing. And you all heard me say that, so I'm consistent. If you go back and you replay this before I even knew where I was going, you all heard me say I'm healing. I said I had a cold and I'm healing. I never say I'm, I don't say I'm sick. I've been practicing that. I don't, I don't, I don't declare I'm broke. Yeah, I may say I'm in between blessings. 
believe in God for a miracle, believe in God for, you know, for financial breakthrough, but you're not going to hear me say I'm broke, not out of my mouth. So let's, um, <clears throat> God gave us language so that we can be blessed. That's the true blessing. How do you talk? Do you get up every morning complaining, frustrated, fussing? Like I said, so we need to go back and we need to revisit these things, people of God, because we 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 are uh, people that Jesus talked about in in uh, Luke the uh, the eighth chapter. People that waste their seeds. Some seed fell by the wayside. Some by thorny ground. You know, stony stony places. Do you know how much, how valuable seed was back in that time? The seed was like money. So what Jesus was basically basically saying is, you have to be out your mind for anybody that understood the seed to just to just be frivolously. Drop and see where it wouldn't be fruitful. No one in their right mind back in that time would do that. So what Jesus is really talking about in this parable is your words. It's amazing how people are so frivolous with their words. They just you just throw words out. I'm sick. Who y'all gonna kill me? Who I'm worried. Y'all gonna make y'all gonna make me have a nervous breakdown. Who I'm so sick and tired. Who I'm broke. I ain't got no money. I can't afford, just frivolous, just throwing seed out. Just frivolous with the seed, just frivolous with your words. And if you don't believe your word is seed, then Proverbs tells us that death and life in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit. How your tongue gonna turn to fruit? That means it had to be seed first. You can't get fruit without seed. <coughs> Luke chapter eight, verse 11 said the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The word of God is seed. Your word is seed. So if, if we if we really want to uh, see a change in our lives, we need to change the way we think. <clears throat> Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We need to change the way we talk. We need to change the way we, we communicate with our children. We need to change the way we communicate with our neighbor. We need to change the way we communicate with strangers. We need to change the way we communicate at work. You get an attitude and you're supposed to be a Christian. And I know they're not doing right, but you need to understand that the Bible says he'll make your enemy your footstool. And the Bible says when your ways please God, he'll make your enemies be at peace with you. So, so we're bypassing, we're bypassing all of these principles of the word of God like, like, they, uh, like they're by choice. These are commandments. We're supposed to love our enemies. So we, you know, we need to go back and, re and rethink. Because <clears throat> some people, you, so they're, they're just caught up in how they look on Sunday. And Monday through Saturday, you, you're tore from the floor. <clears throat> and then when I say again, you, I mean, you know, in, in general. So, you know, for me, I have to stay safe on the street because people do some crazy things on, on, the, on the road, don't they? Yeah, I have to stay safe. And I stay safe. I stay safe. I try to stay safe. <laughs> I try to stay safe because <laughs> there's some crazy drivers out here. Lord, help us stay safe on these highways and these byways. So uh, let's see. R. A. Tory, are you still here? I love this scripture. It encourages us to be satisfied and enriched by our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. Hashtag true wealth. And then it says Revelation chapter two, verse nine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. How can we be in poverty, but rich, spiritually rich, leads to abundant life, eternal life? Thank you. Thank you, R.A. Tory. I'm going to close out with looking at some of these comments. I, 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 I know with all of my heart that something has been said because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I've given you the word of God uh, for this cyber Bible study. And this wasn't planned out. This is straight from the heart. <clears throat> Each time I, I teach is from the heart. It's specifically for this Bible study. Is 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 the Bible says uh, to give us this day our daily bread. This is fresh. Freshly prepared, fresh, hot out the oven from the heart. These are things that will change our life if we implement them. Let's see what else it says. That's true. Powerful. Hashtag unity. Here's another scripture. Psalms 133.1. A song of degrees of David. Behold, 
how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And the only way that we can get unity is through community, gathering, communication, right? Unity, all right? Psalms 133, 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down onto the beard. So that what did that cover? And I just got through telling you all. That, that oil covered his mind. I talked about our mind. We need to think differently, right? And it covered his mouth down to his beard. That oil covered his head, how we see things, our perspective, right? The mouth, you know, touching on those things, how we speak. That went down to the to the skirts of his garments, and it it and it it goes down to the body. I look at that as the head, the body, the community, even the church, and Christ being the head. Uh, Psalms one thirty three, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mounts of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life, forevermore. So. That's uh, Psalms 133, 1 through 3. Let's see if there's any more scriptures. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched. I told you all, this is confirming, and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Wow. I'm telling you, God's perspective is 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 totally different and see uh uh our a tory is confirming everything that i'm teaching and i didn't even go to these scriptures because when you use the principle of out of the mouth of two or three witnesses i'll always be safe in what i'm teaching because when you use that principle then you'll always safe and, and you're safe and free from error and so all of these things are confirmations of what i was saying from someone else revelation chapter 3 verse 18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Beautiful. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Isaiah 59, 14. We're just going to close out with these scriptures because we're not, <clears throat> not quite at an hour yet. Um, Isaiah 59, 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the streets, and equity cannot enter. Verse 15. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it. And it displeased him that they were that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. Praise God. Let's keep going. So we uh we have Jude there, but beloved, building upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. All right, so we're coming to the end. <clears throat> See, Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. <clears throat> Time to change with ways that we communicate. Amen. It is. Brother, it's good to see you online. Peace to you and your family in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praying for you and your wife. Stay encouraged. Thank you so much. Praise God. All right. So that is it for uh, this cyber Bible study for tonight. God bless to uh, each person under the sound of my voice. Uh, for those who are in agreement with, with me, uh, thank you for the likes. For those who uh, want to participate in the Great Commission <clears throat> and share uh, this teaching, because the Great Commission is to spread the gospel. Thank you for helping me with the Great Commission. May God bless you to each one who uh, shared um, this teaching to help with uh, spreading the gospel of the Great Commission. So once again, I am Evangelist Benjamin Allen. 
this is uh, our weekly cyber Bible study. Uh, we are concluding that uh, we need to have a certain mindset when we approach God, a certain attitude, understanding his position, our position. And we need to understand the importance of how we speak. All right, we've hit one hour. So blessings to you, people of God. God bless you. And I'll see you again on next Wednesday.